The Intifada brought the Palestinians back to their own. The children brought it back to life. This is what the 14-year-old champion Fadis Aude did. He brought the Intifada back to where it belongs, to the people who are longing to struggle. The stone has released the power of will. To the little ones, the dream is to win victory or to die as martyrs. I used to go to the Muntar area three times a day to bring him back. Before the Intifada, I used to go after him to Nazarene. It was him who sparked the Intifada. He led a group of 20 youths who were older in age than him. His brother was also in the group. As a matter of fact, it was him who mobilized the youths in the area. He was always in the forefront. He led them to Nitzarim and afterwards to Al-Muntar. Yes, he was a leader. He was always on the front line. I used to pull him backwards and warn him not to risk his life. Faris Fa'iq Aude a name that will never be forgotten. He has become a symbol of Palestinian children. Thanks to him, the Intifada in Gaza gained momentum and the children's attacks gained professional tactics, which are indicative of a natural military genius. He taught them bravery and courage. He proved to the whole world that strength lies in the faith one carries in the heart not the weapon one carries in the hand. He amazed everyone. He scared the soldiers who were bristling with arms. He moved back and forth with his group in the battle theater at Mentar, fighting with stones, their only weapon. I fear for him. He was always in the forefront. He was the only one moving back and forth, and I asked him to stay behind, but he never listened to me. I cried for him several times. I even warned my mom and dad about him. I told them he might get killed. Once a man told us he had seen Paris at Al Muntar. So his father locked Paris up in a room. After a while, a youth came and said he had seen Paris at Al Muntar where confrontations were taking place. His father said, no, Paris is locked up. The youth insisted Paris was out there. I went to check on Paris, only to find that he had jumped out of the window. I returned and I said, Paris is not there. He must be at Al-Muntar. I went out after him and found him there at Al-Muntar amid confrontations. This is the room in which Faris was locked up. He made his way out through the window. I could not catch him. The confrontations continued until 9.30 p.m. when at last I was able to get hold of him. It was raining heavenly that evening. Why should I be afraid? We are all going to die either at home or out in the battlefield. I want to defend Al-Aqsa in order to pray in it. We fear they may blow it up. They are digging beneath it on the excuse of searching for their alleged temple. One should not be afraid because no one can escape the destiny already determined by God. We should not trust any promises of security given by the Israelis. The people should stand firm. They should persist in fighting the Israelis. We should send them away like what happened during the days of Salah al-Din. The people should have strong resolve and faith. Now our people are divided. We should unite our ranks and defeat the Israelis. The Israelis are cowards. The Arabs are bigger in number than the Israelis, but the Arabs are divided. When Muhammad Adurra fell a martyr, Faris Aude was part of the scene. He was there with his father and saw all that happened with his own eyes, not through the eye of the camera. 
He was there in the place where Muhammad al-Durra fell martyr. He could not forget the sight of the incident. He kept saying, they were killed, they were shot dead. Muhammad al-Durra and his father were on their way to repair and wash the car. After they repaired it and washed it, they fell under fire. Muhammad Zura was with his father. The Israelis opened fire at them. They killed Muhammad while he was in his father's lap. They continued to shoot at him until he died in his father's lap. Iman Hajjah was with her mother. Her mother was holding her when the Israelis shot at them in the street. The shots hit Iman and killed her. What's wrong this little girl did in order to be killed? She was an innocent little girl. Her house was bombarded for no reason. Her life was brought to an end too early. Several innocent children were killed in our quarter like Hayman Hajjo, Muhammad al-Durra, Ibrahim Umar and Ahmed Abu Tahir. I was once with a boy called Muhammad Sharif. I asked him to hide behind a tree. A bullet hit him in the chest from a jeep. Another one, a vegetable vendor called Muhammad Abu On, he was as close to the tank as you are to me. They shot him in the chest. I also have a friend who lost one leg because he was shot by Dumdum. Another friend of mine called Abdullah Abu Karsh was shot in the head. He was jumping from one roof to another, a distance of 3.5 meters. I used to warn him, saying, it's too dangerous, son. He answered me, don't worry, mom, I'm a man. I used to ask him, what good a stone can do? He answered, the stone is effective. To them, it's like a bomb. They will not catch me. The stone is useful. It's really effective. When you hold it in the face of a soldier, he runs away. They're pigs. They derive their strength from the weapons in their hands. But when they carry no weapons, they become worthless. Scare a soldier with a stick and he'll run away. With your bare hands, and he will run away. We used to chase them with stones and they ran away with weapons in their hands. Sharon and a thousand others like him will never be able to scare us. With stones as their only weapon, the children achieved what regular armies failed to achieve. The children unified their ranks and fought in the name of God. The Almighty brought fear to the hearts of those who violated all sanctities. Ferris Hode knew his enemies very well. He saw them in their real size. 
he would not accept an opponent less than a tank. It was his equal counterpart. Fadis Odeh was a 12 or 13 year old boy. He had two older disabled brothers. He used to bathe them and dress them up. He was the most distinguished pupil in his class and in the whole quarter. A boy as clever and as passionate as he was would not fight a tank to commit suicide. He was after Martyrum. He was driven by an internal force. He wanted to achieve something big. He told his brother Muhammad, if I fall martyr, be kind to everyone in the family. Don't try to follow my steps if I get killed. Muhammad replied, I want to get killed with you. On Tuesday morning, the 28th of November, 2000, Faris Ozi got up from bed. He bathed his two disabled brothers and dressed them up. Then he washed and went to school. He attended the first, second and third class. Then he asked one schoolmate to go with him. The boy refused. Faris insisted the boy should go with him. The boy said, no, the wall is too high. Faris said, hold me and I will jump over the wall. He jumped and asked his friend to go to the school headmaster and tell him Faris fell martyr. The boy said, what? No, I'm not telling him that. Then Faris left for the place of confrontations. He continued to fight with the stones and the Israelis could not catch him. He was so close to the tank. At nine o'clock, and while Faris was maneuvering the tank, trying to obstruct its way, a trap was set for him. After he ran out of stones, and at a moment of treachery, He knew he was going to fall martyr. He was so kind to me. Every time he came back home, he first called, Mom, where are you, Mom? I used to answer, I'm here, son. Come along, son. Every day in the evening when I see all my children together at home, I realize that he passed away as a martyr. All of them are here except you, son. They are all out in the street, son. He used to play with them. He filled the home with life. He filled it with movement, with passion and love for his brothers. The Israelis did not let him enjoy life. In my prayers, I call upon God to bring death to the one who killed him. An interview was made with the one who killed him. He said Paris provoked us. The closer he got, the more dangerous he became. So we shot him dead. They shot him with a silencer. A soldier shot him as he stooped to pick up a slipper that slipped out of his foot. They shot him here. He remained quiet. No one knew he was shot. He called the other boy near him and said, I've been shot. The boy did not believe it. It can't be true, Faris, the boy said. Faris said, believe me, I'm shot. Come along and pick up the slipper. The boy told us that Faris got up and walked for five minutes and fell down. His friends tried to rescue him, but they couldn't as the tank began shooting at them. There were no first aid men, not even cameramen. It was nine o'clock when he died. Why don't you like to play with boys? Because Faris is not here. Where is he? In heaven. Who killed him? The Israelis. Where did they shoot him? 
In the throat. Show me where. Here. When you see a kite, what happens to you? Tell me. Don't be sad. Tell me. I become sad. Why? Because Faris used to make kites for me. And he died. He fell martyr. Yes, martyr. That is Hodi, the hero of the Age of Rebellion. He carried the hopes and pains of all Palestinian children. He lived their grief and experienced their anguish. He fought for Al-Aqsa, for the children of Palestine and for our dignity. His tiny heart encompassed a people, or even a whole nation. Each one of us had a place in Faris's heart. Let there be a place for Faris in the heart of each of us. Faris, the martyred child of Palestine. I'm proud of Faris. May God have mercy on his soul and the souls of all martyrs. But I want also to say that the Israelis fire at children deliberately. They aim at them. Faris was killed, but there are hundreds of children who will follow his path. The Israelis are mistaken if they think they got rid of him. There are millions on the same hill. The Palestinian blood and nothing else completes the story. The story of dying childhood and a besieged people whose children are hanging on to the rays of light. They carry their stones in their hands, filling them with rage and faith. The children of the stones are the sparks of an everlasting torch. Their stones will never become soft. They are the children of the Intifada. 
our little revolutionaries.